Hello. Welcome to the Overseer Pamphlet. My name is Rob, and I'm the host of this one-man show. Um, yeah, so, hello. How is everybody doing? I am, once again, here to um, chat about, you know, just whatever is happening in pop culture. And this week, if you haven't heard, we've had <laughs> the Met Gala. Um, and it's one of the, probably one, well, it's probably the biggest fashion event of the year. Um, and it's just such a fun time because, you know, you could see, if you like fashion, or even if you don't like fashion, I guess, like, if you just like um, seeing celebrities interact or whatever it is, that's probably the best, um, one of the best occasions to look at. Uh, but also, it's just, I, I like, I, I love seeing what they do with the themes and uh, the different dresses that they like, and, and you know, the designers and everything else, how they can, like, you know, adapt the the theme uh, to, you know, their chosen model for the night. And, yeah, it's just a lot of fun to, to look at and to judge. And it's just like, <laughs> you know, so many interesting conversations come out of it. Uh, people put their two cents on it. Twitter goes crazy, YouTube goes crazy, everyone is like making videos about it, so I thought I'll also share my two cents on who I think was the best dressed, I guess, and the worst ones, so yeah, that's um, going to be the episode, um, also I am uh, leaving my window open, so if you hear any background noise, I'm sorry about that, but it's currently 25, 23 degrees or something in London, so, and it's gonna get to 25 or something today, or 20, yeah, it's gonna get to that, so, wild, warm, at least it's getting pretty warm, and then we're gonna tumble down again on Monday, but whatever, anyways, um, Yes, so before we get into that, actually, of course, songs of the week, as usual. Um, also, I forgot to say that I bleached my hair, so... <laughs> I'm also currently filming with my fully bleached hair. That's a sleigh. Please um, go and follow me on Instagram. I'll probably post some photos soon. So, yeah, and... Um, Next, well, the coming week, this coming week, is going to be my birthday week, because my birthday is this Friday, so just wanted to shake things up for my birthday, and <laughs> yeah, just, I don't know, try and just keep everyone on their little toes, you know? And that's what's happening, basically. <laughs> but anyways, sounds of the week, right? So, first of all, I want to talk briefly about... um the new Willow album and Pathogen. I have listened to all of it, but it seems like a very interesting album. I quite enjoyed it. It's a bit on the classical rock um, and experimental a bit as well. Um, indie rock, I guess I would say. It's not really rock rock, but it's like indie in that sense, you know? Uh, kind of like what uh, the, Arctic Mon the Ar Arctic Monkeys did, uh, like, yeah. What was it? The car? The Arctic Monkeys? The car album? Something like that. But I enjoyed the album and I think I'll put in one song from that, which is The Fear Is Not Real. I just love how she plays with the rhythms and the changes like pace like throughout the entire song, to be fair. Like she goes crazy with inst instrumentals. And it's not like, you know, super loud with rock. It's like very... Most of the tracks are, like, very chill. Not chill, but, you know, they're subdued. Like, in that kind of indie feel to it. I really enjoy it. Um, she's incredible. I love her voice so much. And I think she's really always in her bag whenever she's doing rock or, like, <clears throat> indie experimental rock. I still think one of her best tracks ever is Hover Like a Goddess. That's one of my go-to songs by Willow. So, but, yeah, this album, very interesting. I need to, like, dip a bit more into, like, the entire album again. I haven't had the time to do it, but I really enjoy The Fear Is Not Real. So, that's going to be in the playlist uh, of the songs of the, mo uh, of the month, yeah. Songs of the week of the month, basically. <laughs> but, um, month of May, you can go and see it on my Spotify. Um, so, yeah, that's an incredible track. Sand on the Sand, personally, really loved it. 
Um, then I wanted to. Uh, did I already put this one in? I don't think I did last week. It's called Hypnosis by Iev. It's not recent, but I haven't listened. So it's like that's from their album called Iev Iev. <laughs> But it's a cape song, of course, and it's um, very hip hop um, influenced, I guess. Like the beat is very hip hop, but they well, they they do rap at the end. Uh, there's a the outro is actually just the rap part, which is incredible to me. They just the two rappers go back and forth, uh, but incredible. Um, but the entire song has like this very like, for example, um, Humble by Kendrick Lamar type of uh, beat, um, like staccato um, piano, I guess. Um, but their vocals are, like, very hypnotic. It feels like it goes well with the, uh, th the theme of the song, the, the name of the song, Hypnosis. They're just so good. Uh, the, the, cho uh, the, the chorus is, like, so captivating and mesmerizing, and I just love it. And the beat is just, like, incredible to me. And the way it starts is, like, um, a, a glitching track, basically. And then gets into the beat. It's just wild, wild to me. But I can't believe I never listened to this one before. But it just came on randomly, and I was like, "Oh my god!" That they ate with that. They ate. It sort of feels like a predecessor to what like Batty was going to be then, because like right after this, I think they did, they did Batty, the the track. Um, but this was immaculate. I would have seen this on that album more. Or did it, I don't even know. Batty probably was just a single, to be fair. But yeah, great, great track, great track, incredible stuff. Now we um, have to include "Your Blood" by Aurora. Um, I'm not really sure when it was released. I don't really listen to Aurora that often, to be fair. Like I don't really know that many songs of hers. But this song was recommended to me by someone that I know and. Jesus Christ, like, this song is so good, um, the lyrics of themselves are, like, very whimsical, like, you're just dust and all that stuff, like, very, whatever, I don't know, like, psychedelic, but, um, the beat itself is, like, very, it's, like, probably one of the most pop, pop songs that she's ever done, Aurora, she doesn't usually do, like, super poppy songs, but, um, very cool, very cool stuff. There's an electric guitar, guitar in the back, in the chorus specifically. Um, it's just very, very, very catchy. And her voice is just, wow. Like, she does some incredible runs in the chorus. Uh, which is so, honestly, impressive. I am so impressed. Uh, so, yeah, that's something that has been a repeat. Um, I just love the whole vibe of the song. And as I said, like, it's very catchy, so give it a listen, give it a listen. If you have never listened to Aurora, probably is one of, like, the most, um, like, easy-to-listen songs by her, I guess. Like, in a way, it's not super difficult. Like, it's very, no, it's, like, earworm, so good. Then, I want to mention, um, Charlie XCX, because her song 360 just came out. So, I am, uh, so happy about that just love the track so much um i did a tiktok on with with the sound the video is incredible like um she has she has so many of the internet girlies um in the video like julia fox um of course because she's referencing her she has emma chamberlain she has alex, alex gonzani of course my girl um she has quenley blackwell she has so many internet girlies. It's so like it's so funny because the theme is internet girlies basically. Uh, so slay. Um, this is just a very funny video. I love seeing my my girl Alex Consani and everything. So I'm clapping and cheering for her all, all the time. So <laughs> yeah, like, and the song is very fun. I'm very excited about about this album. Like every single song she's put out so far is just a banger in my books. Like it's very hyper pop but also very like EDM club type of vibe. So, like, out of, out of the four songs she already put out, I've saved all of them. So, um, I'm just excited to, like, listen to it. So, yeah, um, that's the vibe. Um, so, that's, yeah, that that's gonna be also in my playlist. I'm gonna put it there. Um, 
and just yeah remember to save brat pre-save brat um brat is coming out i'm actually not sure let me see when is it coming out Re it's going to be released on the 7th of june that's such a long way to go interesting and it has 15 tracks so the funny thing is that it starts off with 360 which is a song that just came out and ends with 365 so smart you know smart smart decision you know smart decision um but yeah i'm just excited for the album seems very very cool back to back is still my favorite song i think maybe but also von dutch slaps um so yeah i hope to god that that is not her actual well maybe it is i don't know maybe it's still gonna be iconic i don't know but the um album cover oh my god i'm not an helicopter shit but the album cover looks it's just like a lime green background with um you know a typed uh brat on it basically so interesting interesting choice i guess uh, but yeah honestly still slaying so yeah so these were the songs of the week um i'm gonna as i said like you as usual put them in my playlist so you can guys can check them out if you want but um Let's just move on to the the main event, which is um, the Megala 2024. So, Megala happened, happened on the 6th of May, uh, so it was literally, was it Monday? Last Monday, yeah. Um, but, of course, the way I put out the, like, the, the podcast itself doesn't really allow me to like you know what i mean i could have put a special episode on it but i just didn't want to to be fair <laughs> i just wanted to talk about it later on also because i wanted to like look at all the hd pictures and all that stuff i was waiting for those getty images uh pictures to come out and they did not disappoint so yeah i am here to discuss the the mecca first of all um well if you guys don't know what the mecca is the mecca is a <clears throat> basically uh, an event a uh, yearly event organized by the Metropolitan uh, Museum of Arts um uh, in New York and it's a fundraiser where a bunch of celebrities get invited and are basically asked to dress up um following a specific theme so each year is a very different there's a very different theme um this year, the, the event's uh, theme was the Garden of Time and Sleeping Beauties of Fashion, basically. So there's a lot about... Um, so the central theme was, like, th uh, like basically re -esimating, well, mostly time, but also the garden theme. And Sleeping Beauties of Fashion, in that sense, also, like, entails a bit of, like, you know, decadence and, like, time and... Um, Specifically, I think what they meant by Sleeping Beauties of Fashion is basically like old, very old uh, pieces of clothing or like fashion that are very fragile because of the time it has passed. So it's sort of like giving a note to the old fashion statements that we, as we made basically old fashion um, pieces in that sense. So there's a lot about time, as I, as I said, like a lot about like um, the inev inevitability of like time passing and the garden of time instead is also not simply like well it's referencing uh, a a short story by jg uh, ballard uh 1962 short, a short short story basically and has the same name it's also called the garden of time and that story specifically is about um a count count axel and his wife um who live in this very opulent palace and they have this very beautiful garden with all these flowers that are like that have, that have like very um, magical properties. That like ba basically each petal of the flower, if it's like uh, taken out, can uh, roll back time or like stretch time in that sense. Um, so this count and his wife to just like live in like very opulent uh, palace, and right outside of their palace, there is a this angry mob of. Uh, revolutionary armies basically that want to destroy 
this opulence basically right so it's a lot about also class um i guess class struggle and like you know aristocracy aristocracy and like the decay of aristocracy and so basically the story goes that these um the count and his wife basically to still bask i guess in their um opulence they decide to like start taking a petal from the flowers one at a time and uh stretch time and like avoid the inevitable basically well not avoid sorry uh push back the inevitable in that sense because at the end of the story basically they they're they're opulent uh yeah they're opulent um i guess like home in that sense gets still destroyed in a way because at the end of the day like the flowers are gonna still decay like they keep on you know they're gonna end the flowers anyways you know what i mean like they're not gonna have um they're not gonna be able to like push this back forever so it's again the the theme here is the inevitability of time and like the, the passage of time you cannot um you know you just have to surrender basically to the passage of time that's the only thing that literally makes us all equal we're all uh the same under basically the passage of time and it's also as i said like there's also a theme of aristocracy and like decadence again so it, like it, the two like main themes are still connected in some way like the sleeping beauty of time and the garden of time sorry the sleeping beauty of fashion and the garden of time they're very much linked because they're all like invoke this like both uh, both the, this uh, theme of like decaying um beauty but also you know the passage of time and yeah i guess the garden of time itself brings in which is what most people like went with this year instead of actually playing a lot of, with the, the time theme which i really wish they did but it most most people basically went for the garden theme and the you know luscious uh, gardens and all that stuff so um yeah so Every year is very important to like understand the theme, I guess, to see what, like, to also I think properly judge the celebrities who attend because and the you know designers, because in my opinion, like, I don't know, like the, you can always look good, I guess, in a way, but if you don't follow the theme, then you're not understanding the assignment in a way. So my basically my my favorite dresses from this um from this um year's Met Gala um are yes well very well dressed people of course like they, they look good like the, the the overall like look serves but also is kind of on, on theme they sort of understood the assignment as well so it has to have both you cannot just look good and have nothing to you know contribute to a theme i'm looking at you uh <laughs> kendall jenner <laughs> wait no was it kendall or was it kylie I think it was Kylie, actually. I think Kendall actually did a great job. Yeah, no, it was Kylie. Uh, Kylie did a terrible job. Like, she looked good. I'm not gonna lie, she looked incredible. But nothing was screaming, you know, Garden of Time. Nothing was screaming, like, you know, Sleeping Beauty of Fashion. So, um, disgusting. So, uh, come on. Like, if you, you can look good, but you just have to, like, put some work into it. And, of course, it's not the celebrities themselves who are, like, responsible sometimes for the clothes. But they are. I think, like... Some people like show how well, they can get if they want to. They can get very involved with the um, with the whole like you know planning of the uh, of the dresses and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I'm also blaming them, you know. So yeah, that's a pretty much um, what we have to keep in mind: like relentless march of time, mortality, decaying, decaying of fashion specifically with the Sleeping Beauty of, um, of fashion. So, yeah, you need to, like, wear something that is both beautiful, but also thought-provoking and captivating. This is not simply, like, um, like, we're talking about how couture, like, and high fashion and, um, artistry in that sense. Like, that's, that's all, there's, the, the reason why there's also, like, hosted at the Met, um, the Metropolitan Museum of Art is because, like, it needs to be artistic and thought-provoking and, you know, it needs to give something, at least something, please, something. But yeah, let's go through like the. Um, maybe we can, yeah, maybe we can do first the best dressed. Maybe. I'm gonna leave my favorite favorite for last, and then after the best dressed, I'm gonna go into the worst dressed. I guess that's my, my goal. Um, 
So, okay, also another disclaimer is um, that every single year, the man cannot do shit. Like, they always go with the most boring shit ever. Like, they always go for a suit and, you know, suit and tie or whatever, which is under, like, I, I guess so. Like, there's, there's not much to do with, well, uh, that's a lie, though. You can do so much with uh, man's fashion if you just, like, push the envelope a bit, but... So yeah, there's only going to be one man in my best dress, which is Dan Levy, and uh, he's wearing Loewe, and he's wearing basically this, like, very interesting suit, it's a suit, unfortunately, but the way it's done, it's, like, interesting and new, I guess, like, not really that, you know... Like, it's, it's, quite, it's quite original, I don't think I've seen, like, it's and it goes very well with the theme, so basically it's like this suit that starts off from the bottom with um a floral pant like very beautiful and then it starts fading into the um the jacket of the suit which is completely black so basically at the waist level the floral theme starts like f blending into just pure black pitch black so that's very smart like that's so cool and it looks really good as well like it looks very well executed the, the fabrics look incredible i just really loved it um it's just a beautiful 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 um very beautiful um ex beautifully executed i guess dress um so yeah the theme is uh kept very well it's like you know it entails also a story of course the the flowers getting you know used up and just you know leading into destruction and like uh, decaying and also you know the passage of time and you know he went with the garden theme here but it all like he also referenced the story which is very cool as well uh, he didn't do much with like the decaying fashion he didn't take any like you know very old pieces from very old collections or like very um or he didn't go with like you know the decaying um, fabrics or whatever, but the garden theme and the time theme was very well executed. Really liked it. It looks good. So all that I could ask for, you know. Congratulations, Dan Levy. You you did that. So yeah, go look at the pictures if you want to. That they're just very beautiful. Um, then I also want to talk about Doja Cat, of course. She was wearing Vetaman. Vetaman's like um, very well known for like very simple i guess uh dresses in a way but she referenced she, her dress was very smart i think like the reference that she did was actually very historical which i love um so she was the, the so, and the dress itself is actually quite simple it's just literally like a uh, cotton super 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 oversized t-shirt which basically becomes a dress basically like a one-piece dress um and this cotton garment basically is well i don't know if it's like actually wet or not like i think she said like they used gel hair gel to achieve that but it looks like it's like a wet look basically right like it's um drenched in water right and then her makeup is like super super cool it's like um it looks like someone like you know has been crying and like it's basically mascara uh falling down her cheeks basically very cool look uh, she's uh, rocking her, like, bold, um, like, her boss cut, I guess, her blonde boss cut, so, slay. Um, so the theme itself, what, like, what, what is she, what is she actually referencing? So she's referencing, um, late, uh, 18th century France, and women were wearing, basically, cotton, there were, there were actually women wearing cotton dresses, white cotton dresses, and drenching themselves in water, in water to, and then to go out and, like, just basically, um, show off their bodies without being naked and it was just a sign of um basically showing off independence and freedom and basically you know just um emancipation in a way um very cool so there's that like sleeping uh beauty of fashion element in there but there's also a bit of like um decay in there because apparently well this is not 100 percent confirmed but apparently these women back in the 18th uh, century they well because of this specific choice that they did like of going out 
fully um, drenched in water. They used to get uh, pneumonia, and basically most of them died because of this. Um, so <laughs> that's dark. That's um, damn. That's like very dark as well. But and also there's a bit of like um, a reference to. Well, she explained there's also a reference to the Garden uh, of Time in a way, like to the floral theme. She decided to go like a bit rogue and she wanted to like have everything in cotton, like pure cotton, because cotton, ex like the, you got, and like it, it's quite smart actually, because the flower of the cotton plant is actually what they use to like make cotton clothes, and that's like co cotton fabric. So she's also, you know, basically giving a nod to like, one of the most used flowers in fashion, which is cotton, actually. So, very smart. Like, he's taking, like, a very simple idea, like, a very mundane, or, like, something that's really well, well used and, like, you know, turning it into something special. So, kudos to her. Um, I have to say, like, the look, look doesn't look outstandingly, like, um, flashy or whatever. Like, it's very simple. It's just, like, a white cotton shirt. But it kind of works. It, it kind of slays. So, I and I think the the makeup really um, ele elevates the look a bit. Like if you look at the entire thing together, it looks incredible to me. So, very impressed. Um, cool. Then I want to also mention Emma Chamberlain. She was wearing uh, Jean Paul Gaultier. Um, Gaultier is like, um, well, they, I think they're referencing their own old. Um, I think it was like nineteen. Well, it was definitely like 20th century. They had like this um, collection that was mostly like uh, draped. Uh, sorry, like there was like these busts, draped busts, and all that stuff. Um, but she's going for like a very gothic, um, very gothic look, um, which is also kind of floral. Um, she, I think she would say that she was going for like a gothic Sleeping Beauty. Like the princess herself, um, so yeah, so she's a Sleeping Beauty in the Garden of Time, basically. So because her dress is basically the, um, so she's, she's also basically referencing this like decay, the garden's decay. So it's like a black, sort of like dark brown, maybe. Um, so it's just like this haunting uh, version of the Sleeping Beauty, this very gothic and intricate. Um, look is just very beautiful um so it's like yeah lace corset and you know there's a lot of floral themes on the entire dress just beautiful uh incredible and i think at a certain point when she was interviewing other people she got rid of her like of her train or whatever it was or like her it was not really a train because it doesn't go from the 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 end of the dress but it's like starting from the from her back but i don't know what it was but very cool um yeah. So she is like sort of referencing the like you know this link between like fragility and decay and just you know incredible. She was giving both cunt in a way but also um horror theme like decay and like haunting beauty in that sense. Um but yeah, honestly so beautiful. I'm. Um, she was um, also this time around the only influencer invited, so she did a great job in terms of representation, I guess. But she like Emma knows how to like get a good look and serve. So I'm very impressed. Very very cool look. Um, then of course I wanted to mention Mother Lana Del Rey. Um, she was looking incredible, incredible. Um, she was wearing this, uh, I think she was wearing Alexander McQueen. Yeah, she, Alexander McQueen. And uh, she's wearing this, like, um, huge veil that goes even on top of her head. And then the dress underneath is, like, the same color as this, like, the sandy color, basically. So it's, like, all it seems like one thing. But on top of her dress, so it's, like, this huge, like, veil. And, like, her dress underneath is, like, embroidered with like sort of like these brambles basically like it's like thorny brambles or like a rose bramble or something i don't know but like these 
like thorny brambles going all over her body and then reaching up above her hair and her head and basically lifting the veil even up and piercing it as well so it's like stunning very interesting look very unusual and you know captivating and also very smart because she's basically referencing again like instead of like referencing like a luscious garden she's referencing like you know a decayed like you know like you only see these like thorny brambles so there's no leaves there's no nothing like there's no green in it it's just like this brown like vine that goes um her under her dress and you know it's just beautiful 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 stuff and then she holds a rose just one single rose in her hand so very cool look very uh hunting but definitely like definitely plays with like the decaying garden and all that stuff so cool and i guess also like if you think about it like the piercing the veil and all the stuff like the fabric it's quite um also playing into like well it's not really playing into the like re -exhumating old fashion pieces but um it is sort of like referencing a bit the decay of the fabric itself so cool cool stuff cool very cool stuff and she looked beautiful she looked gorgeous she doesn't really attend these fashion events that often but when she does she eats so i am very impressed next next wanted to shout out sabrina um harrison she's wearing well Krishana, well, how do you even say that? I don't know, but she's wearing a very cool fucking look. Her look is probably one of the few looks that really plays with the time theme. Um, so it's she's referencing actually. So she's wearing this very like full gold um, dress made up of several clocks, and they're all like melting clocks. So she's referencing also Salvatore Dali, her and then his famous um, surrealist painting. Um, I think it was like the presentation of mundane the one that she's referencing but it's basically you know surrealism the you know the inevitable march of time you know like she's playing a lot with the time theme but she's not really doing the garden theme which is refreshing i guess to see because everyone else is doing mostly the, the the garden and the flowers and all this stuff um and she's like all in gold incredible hat like she has an incredible headpiece like it's a hat i think made of um golden rods or whatever it is but super cool her quote-unquote bag handbag whatever it is i don't know what it is but it's super cool as well also gold and it's just beautiful like the dress looks incredible i love a good reference to like actual uh, like art pieces and like it's on theme it looks incredible and a good a good salvador, uh, salvador dali never gets unnoticed in my opinion so she ate that um yeah so that was another great great addition to the night honestly don't really know much about um sabrina but she slays um then of course i cannot not mention tyla tyla was wearing balmain and her dress was probably one of the most talked about dresses uh for, for the night and she was wearing this like basically this um Oh, I don't, I don't think it was actually made out of sand. I, I can't remember if it's actually made of sand or not, but, like, it's a full dress um, that goes even to the floor, and it's, it looks like it's made out of sand, and it's fully molded to, molded to her body to the point where, like, literally she cannot... It looks very uncomfortable to be fair. Like, she has to be lifted up to do the stairs. Like, literally two men had to, like, lift her, lift her up and make her go up the stairs basically so um yeah very cool she's playing with the theme of the sands of time and another you know great inventive theme here like she's playing instead of doing the garden of time she's doing the sands of time and you know she's also ha um she also has like this clasidra um with her like in her bag uh super cool incredible idea fits super well body snatched <laughs> she's just eating it up i love her like very short bob that she has it's not even a bob actually it's just like a almost like a pixie cut it's not really a pixie cut but she looks bomb so yeah and kudos to her like you know signs of time not not much to explain there like literally you know she's referencing a lot there already um and she looks really good i am very impressed and that this was her first ever mega so 
hopefully she can become a fashion girly as well or like people are gonna notice um what she did i mean i'm sure they already have because she's she was one of the most talked about uh, people from the night i think so um slate and then before i actually give you um, the last um okay before i uh, yeah that's, that's right. before i actually give you the my, my overall favorite i'm gonna give you some honorable mentions i really liked uh, tana taylor uh in the bold uh she was wearing this like um burgundy or like this scarlet red um dress made out of you know it's like at the end it's like um a, this beautiful like almost blood red uh train and then her bust was really really cool and then the top of her bust is basically crystallized flowers uh, all in red scarlet red which also references the story because actually this the the flowers of time whatever it is in the garden they're actually crystallized flowers or something like that so yeah she's doing the theme she's doing the theme and her hair the, the hair is uh, bleached a bleached a full bleached um it's really a ponytail but cool like it's like you know it breaks the, the the red super well I just really liked the color, like the way she was dressing. It's just really, really cool. But that's one of the matches I wanted to give. Um, also, want to mention Kendall, Kendall Jenner, and to be fair, even uh, Kim Kardashian. They were both actually on theme, uh, which is very cool. Like they, I think actually Kendall was the bravest one. She took an un, an. Un, well, not not unreleased. Like basically, she took this very old piece of um. Wait, what was her um? Who was she wearing actually? Let me see if I can find her. She was she took well, like a very old piece of the collection uh, she was wearing that was never actually worn. So that the way that this was actually done was just showed off, um, on mannequins when it was first presented, but it was never worn by anyone in terms of models or like, um any sort of, you know, fashion event, so, I cannot find it, I cannot find it, but she was stunning, so, just know that, I don't think it was Mew Mew, it wasn't Mew Mew, but either way, Slade, and Kim K was also wearing an, a very interesting dress, uh, she was also referencing um, a lot, especially with the, with the cardigan, she was wearing, like, she was wearing Maison Mar Mar Margiela, I think it was. Um, so she has this like very interesting, like very super tight uh, corset uh, and bust um, that goes basically decays into like these um, silver flowers. Very beautiful. She looks body's tea. The body's tea. And then she's wearing this cardigan, which everyone was saying like, "What the fuck is she doing?" Uh, she didn't really understand. I think what what she was actually doing with it, but it is. Kind of like a, I think there's a lot of history in there. Go and look it up. Um, it's a very, you know, historical piece. Um, like it has a lot of, you know, themes related to like the sleeping beauty of time of fashion. So, kind of worked overall. The look is a gag, I think, but it's not really like my favorite overall of the night. But cool stuff. No, <laughs> my favorite overall was of course Zendaya. I'm such a simpleton i guess but zendaya really oh, she really did that again and i know this might be a controversial opinion this is definitely like definitely not the best look she's ever done but i think her theme was actually quite interesting uh, which i don't think many people understood but um also many people were complaining about the color scheme that she chose which is like green and blue i think it was mostly and people are saying like oh they don't they never go together they, they're ugly no stop saying that like y'all are making it ugly like if you if you wear something that is like bomb doesn't matter it will look good and she was looking great she was serving body she was serving face she was serving makeup and she was serving everything so she had two looks actually the first one was from also Mila Margaria, um and it's a 1930 um custom made well she was well inspired by 1930 um collection and it was readapted to her and she has this like very cool 
blue and green shades um like the, the dress already i think it was like yellow and blue i think but she repurposed it to her liking basically and she went with this um very like enchantress sort of vibe and this is what people don't get like it's she like she's trying to embody like so she has grapes all over her body and she's like um basically looking like an enchantress almost she's referencing both Dionysus which is like the god of wine and grapes and all that stuff and like um opulence and all that while also looking like you know <laughs> like an enchantress so she's like getting that magical element from the story itself from the garden um, of time and she's also giving us a bit of that gothic look so that she's all, all, both giving us the, the opulent look but also the decaying gothic um theme a bit sort of like what emma chamberlain did with hers but she is really stunning like the the dress and i beg you to look at the the gown like it's it's both see-through but also not like her i don't know where her legs are like if i look at the dress i'm like visually tripped in a way because i cannot see what the fuck like where the legs are at even though it's supposed to be like sort of like see-through a bit but i don't know it's just incredible but yeah, so she has this very gothic-inspired makeup look as well. Um, she plays a lot with, like, electric blue and emerald green. I love a girl who's, like, risky with her colors. She's just going for it, you know? I love her. Um, so the end result is, like, a very um, psychedelic, mystical, like, celestial seas um, and mythical forests, I guess. Like, she's really going for, like, a mythical uh, theme here. Um so yeah there's a lot of like metallic details in the, in the dress um very ethereal as well at the same time she has a very interesting headpiece as well and she has a black veil that goes over her face as well it's not really like super like she, it's not covering her face completely like you can still see her makeup perfectly fine so that's great um and there's also a lot of like gemstone references here which also i think plays into like the crystal flower of it all and the, the opulent paths from the story as well so yeah like it's giving basically this you know opulent time that is like about to go in, 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 the, in, the, in the, on the cusp of becoming you know oh, falling into decay basically it's like super cool um so she has that yeah i, I like uh someone said like um who was it was it like um oh yeah the massachusetts daily collegian the wrote this article about her also as well and she's also giving this so they say like she was um sort of referencing this solemn beauty tinged with like a melancholy um feeling of a fading empire which is basically the entire story of the garden of time like incredible and it's just you know the fact that it's custom designed and she's just wearing that off um incredible really liked it super super cool stuff so her second dress instead was a um, Givenchy, I think it was Givenchy um, long gown with like a huge train. I've seen it's not my favorite out of the two. Like the the first one, the Maison Margiela, was like my favorite one. But this one is like a fully black black dress um, that sort of plays into the, I guess, the aristocracy a part of the the story a bit and. The most interesting part is like her headpiece, which is a bouquet of uh, roses, specifically, I think, installed on, like, fused with her hair a bit. Like, I, I don't know, it's like installed, like, it's a headpiece, but it's like a reversed bouquet. Um, so, like, you really focus a lot on the the face, the makeup, and the, um, the flowers, because it, those are the only pieces that bring color to the whole thing um because everything else is just black but that second one was also very cool but her first look was just incredible her lip um her lipstick or lip gloss whatever she's using like it it's a like dark smudged like it's almost black but it's it has a bit of like a brown tint to it it's very cool she has this like incredible like makeup look honestly it's just so cool but i loved it um yeah so stifle um so she was definitely my winner in my books <laughs> so if you don't understand that that's whatever i don't care it's my opinion so um yeah 
Um, but to finish off worst dress of the night, Nicki Minaj. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but she was. What the fuck was she wearing? She was looking like um, Dora the Explorer. Uh, she's wearing this um, dress made by Marnie. Marnie, and it looks like it was painted by a child. That's what I'm saying. Her airpiece, she's looking like Dora the Explorer. Um, I don't know. Like, it's made out of all of these, like, pretty flowers. It looks like sort of like an impressionist painting a bit, but um, it's not really giving. I don't know. It just looks uncomfortable. It looks ugly. She looks like a, a doll, almost, but like a doll that's been, like, abused by a child. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't look good. It looks childish as well. At the same time, I just don't really like it personally. Terrible. I'm so sorry, Nikki. Love you, but also, what the fuck? Then I want to also put in Dua Lipa. Sorry, girl, but I don't know what the fuck is that. Like, doesn't really give me any theme at all. Like, she's just looking like a burlesque um, inspired outfit, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um. I kind of have to give also the ugly treatment to Stray Kids. I'm so sorry, but they were they were wearing Tommy figure, I think. They were just wearing suits. Nothing that has to do with the theme at all. Like, nothing. Literally nothing. They were wearing, like, blue and red suits. That's it. There was nothing on it. No flower theme. No garden theme. No decay theme. Nothing. Um, so, yeah. They take the L as well. Um, I'm trying to think if there was any... Uh, well, I really disliked Cardi B's look as well. Like, she was wearing this unnecessarily, like, huge gown that didn't do anything. It was not, like, a transformation look, nothing. It was just, like, an in insanely huge gown that had no floral theme, nothing. It was just purely black, nothing much going on. So, I don't know what the fuck that was, but whatever. Um... So, yeah. I... I think that I, I don't have anyone else to slander. <laughs> I think so. All the others were, like, mad. I think I would have to say, like, most of all, they were just, like, all pretty boring looks this, uh, this season around. Actually, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have slander. Um, Alexander Skarsgård. He was wearing Calvin Klein, literally the most basic... Um, black and white suit what the fuck step it up you're so tall you can play so well with your body proportions you could done so much more oh my god oh well um disappointing but not surprised you know not really surprised um yeah so apart from that this is pretty much the end of the episode i guess but um hope you guys Get into fashion, get into this gig, and I hope next year y'all commit to the bit a bit more, you know, and get creative with it. Please, 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 please. Um, but either way, this is gonna be uh, my birthday week, so I'm gonna try my best to like do an episode. I don't know if I'll be able to because I'm gonna have so much to do during the, the weekend. But if I can do an episode, it will most likely be about the new Billie Eilish. Uh, album coming out exactly on my birthday so thank you for the birthday gift billy i love you uh, but anyways um hope you guys have a nice week and keep on slaying bye